There's been a lot of chatter lately about augmented reality, but where are things at? What can we expect? And just how will it help me acquire my morning latte? Engineer Thomas Cordell coined the phrase augmented reality in 1992 while working at Boeing to describe a novel concept. Instead of bringing a user into a virtual world, AR brings a virtual world to the user, ultimately to enhance perception. Cordell proposed that such a system could aid engineers and repair technicians, and the following year, he and his colleagues gave a presentation on environment displays at the 1993 Virtual Reality Annual International Symposium. Of all places, the concept was well received, but much of the technology necessary to create augmented reality was just not cost effective to bring to market. After all, we're talking early 90s processor speeds here. Advances in recent years, however, are making it much more plausible. Primarily, cheap enough processors, fast enough online connections, and the widespread adoption of affordable digital cameras to provide a visual input. Today, nearest tube from a crosshair is an iPhone app designed specifically for displaying information about the London Underground. Layer is being called the world's first augmented reality browser, running on Android and iPhone. Bionic Eye for the iPhone will direct you to the nearest Starbucks. Tops is using it to sell baseball cards. GE's Plug Into The Smart Grid ad campaign makes it possible for anyone with a webcam to try out augmented reality on a small scale. And the list goes on. Ellie from our very own Rocket Boom Tech met up with Chetan Damani of Acrossair to understand what was behind the London Underground app. The augmented reality application um, nearest tube basically shows you exactly where the nearest tube is for a particular line based on your particular location. And it displays it in a 3D view. So you just have to put your phone up and it will show you exactly which direction you should be walking to. Augmented ID is a concept that would use facial recognition to access a database of contact information from networks like Facebook, LinkedIn and YouTube, linking your online life to the feds, uh, to the real world. Desault Systems is working on giving an AR touch to the old games on the backs of cereal boxes. Liverpool-based artist Chris O'Shea recently built an AR billboard. And Professor Babic A. Parviz is working on developing contact lenses that could act as AR displays. Which leads where all roads come to an end, Star Trek. If ever there was a nice visual representation of what can be done with augmented reality, it's the holodeck on Star Trek, where users engage with computers to live in a world of fantasy and dreams. Forever. Or so it seems.